All praise to the Most High God. Again, tonight's topic is called spiritual midgets. Spiritual midgets. Midget is in the Bible, but not the actual word midget. Okay, so because somebody might be offended at that. All right. Give me the book of Leviticus 21 verse 16. Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 16. The book of Leviticus, chapter 21, verse 16. Read. And the Lord speak unto Moses, saying, mm -hmm. Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed in their generations, that hath any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. So now, this is what's going into when it comes to the offering, um, the offering of the nation of Israel, when it comes to the priesthood. You understand? They were not allowed to be able to deal with the things con pertaining to the priesthood. Okay, read on. For whatsoever man he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach a blind man or a lame or he that hath a flat nose or, any or anything superfluous. So now, this, these were the requirements. This is now under the law of animal sacrifice. You understand? Under the old covenant, these was the requirements. When it comes to the offering of the priesthood. You understand? Read. Or a Come man that, has, that is broken yeah, footed. Or verse broken 19. handed. Okay, read verse 19 again for me. Leviticus chapter 21 verse 19. Mm -hmm. Or a man that is broken footed. Or broken handed. You see that thing? So these were, the, these were the, the type of people that the Lord did not want. In the office of the priesthood. You understand? It didn't, doesn't mean that the Lord didn't like these people. Because... Guess what? These people were born with blemishes like this. You understand? It's of the Lord. Go ahead. Or crooked or crook back. Or crook or back. Or today in the world they call it crooked back. Okay, go ahead. Or a what? Or crook back or a dwarf. Or dwarf. Today they call it midget. Dwarf. Go ahead. Or he that has a blemish in his eye. Mm -hmm. Or be scurvy or scabbed, or had his stones broken. You see that thing? So, guess what? The reason why I'm going here is so that we can be justified in what we say. Give me that in Romans chapter 3. Okay? Romans 3. Romans chapter 3, read verse 4. Romans chapter 3, verse 4. Go ahead. God forbid. Yea, let God be true, mm -hmm. but every man a liar. Read. As it is written, as it, thou is be, as, as it is written, as it is written, is this, as it is written, go ahead, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, that we might just, that we might be justified in the things we say, because we teach it as it is written, precept upon precept. So that's why I'm going to Leviticus the twenty-first chapter. You understand? Because it's written, dwarf. That's media today in today's world. You understand? That we may be justified in the things we say. Read that part again. Romans chapter 3 that, verse 4. No, no, that thou mightest be what? That thou mightest be justified in thy sayings. Read. And mightest overcome when thou art judged. And mightest overcome when thou art judged. You understand? Now, let's deal with the topic now. Spiritual, spiritual midgets. Okay, give me the book of First Peter's. First Peter chapter 2 verse 1. First Peter 2 and verse 1. Let's read that. First Peter chapter 2 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and, what? and hypocrisies and all guile and all guile, bitterness, laying aside all malice and all guile. Go ahead. And hypocrisies. And hypocrisies. Go ahead. And envies. Mm -hmm. And all evil speakings. And all evil speakings. And all evil speakings. These things that we're reading here, these are idols. You understand? Malice, guile, hypocrisy, envies, and all evil speakings. All these, what we're reading here, these are all idols right here. Give me that in uh, Ezekiel chapter 14. These are all idols. You understand? Ezekiel chapter 14, start of verse 1. 
the book of Ezekiel, chapter 14, verse 1. Go ahead. Then came you know certain... Mm. Before you get that, whole Ezekiel, we're coming back to Ezekiel. Give me Colossians 3, verse 5. Colossians, I'm going to set it up like this. Colossians, chapter 3, verse 5. Let's read that. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Mortify, therefore, your members, which are upon the earth. Read. Fornication. Fornication is an idol. Fornication and cleanness. Go ahead. Inordinate affection. Me meaning unnatural affection. Go ahead. Evil concupiscence. Meaning evil sexual desires. Read. And covetousness. Mm -hmm. Which is idolatry. You see that thing? He's giving you, he's giving you, he's giving you some of the things that contribute to what? Idolatry. So these things that the Apostle Paul is mentioning here, these are all idols. And covetousness, which is idolatry. You understand? Because all of these things here, they fall under covetousness, which is idolatry. These are idols right here. You understand? He didn't mention all, but he's main naming some. Now, go to Ezekiel now. Chapter 14, verse 1. Don't forget what we read in First Peter. You understand? The things that we, we read about in, in the book of First Peter, chapter 2, verse 1, those are idols. They form part of the list that we just read in Colossians 3, verse 5. Okay, come on. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. Read. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart. You see that thing? These men have set up their idols in their hearts. So where's the idols at? In the mind. They have set, up, they have set them up. Because in order for you to set something up, you actually have to, there's effort involved in this. You have to put effort to set it up. So the Lord is telling Ezekiel, say, listen, these men and women, by the way, okay, because we talking about today now, men and women, they've set up idols in their minds. Okay, come on. And put the stumbling block of the iniquity before their face. Because those idols, that's the stumbling block in this truth. You understand? Go ahead. Should I be inquired of all by them? You see, the Lord says, must I be inquired by these men that have set up idols in their hearts? Go ahead. Therefore, speak unto them mm -hmm. and say unto them, Read. Thus saith the Lord God, every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart, and put it the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face. Read. And cometh to the prophet. And do what? And cometh to the prophet. And cometh to the prophet. Because what will the prophet do? Hold this, Micah 5 and 10. We coming back here. Micah chapter 5 is 10. And cometh to the prophet. Because this is what the prophet will do. You understand? No, no. I don't think that's the one I want. Amos 5. Amos 5 and 10, not Mike. I'm sorry. Amos 5 and 10. Amos chapter 5, verse 10. Go ahead. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. They do what? They hate him that rebuketh at the gate. They, re they hate him that rebuketh in the gate. So who rebukes in the gate? The prophet. You understand? The leaders of Israel. The men of war that the Lord will send to the street corners to rebuke the people. Guess what? It's not just at the gate, in the congregation as well. Among the congregation. Brothers and sisters, you understand? Read that again. Amos chapter 5 is 10. Mm -hmm. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. Read. And they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. They hate him that speaketh, at, that rebuketh in the gate. And abhor him. Because to abhor meaning extreme hatred. You understand? Extreme hatred, him that speaketh uprightly. How do you speak uprightly? You speak according to the laws of the Mosai. You understand? So now go back to Ezekiel now, chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 4 again. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Ray? Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart mm -hmm. and putteth the stumbling block 
of his iniquity before his face. And coming to the prophet. And coming to the prophet, the seer, you understand, read. I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. You see that thing? He says, I, the Lord, I'm going to answer him according to the multitude of his idols. So what is the Lord teaching us? The Lord is teaching us that we have multitude of idols that we worship on a day to day. You understand? And those idols that we have set up in our minds is what's destroying us. That's what he's saying. So that's why when a class, uh, when we, when there's a class on a daily basis, when we have classes, guess what? This is how the Lord will answer you based on the multitude of your idols. You understand? Some, you, some of you will take heed of it. Some of you will not take heed to it. Okay, read on. That I may take the house of Israel in their own heart mm -hmm. because they are all estranged from me through their idols. You see that thing? That's how we are estranged from the Lord. The most that God is saying, they are all estranged from me through their idols. Because when we serve idols, guess what? We're not serving the Mosa. That's why the Lord will be jealous because we're serving other gods. We've set up idols in our minds. We bow down to them, he's saying. So that's how we become estranged to him. We become, this, we become strangers to the Lord. You understand? Give me, give me that in Jeremiah 2. Okay. Give me Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 21. He says, we are estranged to him through our idols. Watch this. Jeremiah 2, 21. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 21. Read. Yet I planted thee a noble vine. Mm -hmm. Holy a right seed. Read. How then art, how then art thou turned into the degenerate plants of a strange vine unto me? You see what the Lord is asking? He says, I planted thee a noble vine. Noble. Holy a right seed. Upright. You understand? He says, how then art thou turned into a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? The Lord says, I don't recognize you. You understand? I don't recognize you. I made you upright. You understand? Give me that in Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Verse 29. He says, I made you upright. You decided to do your own thing. Now the thing that the, you decided to go follow after other gods and worship those gods, bow down to them and serve them. You understand? Meaning what? To partake in those customs that go with those idols. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Verse 29. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 29. Come on. Lo, this only have I found, mm -hmm. that God hath made man upright. You see that thing? The Lord has made man upright. He made us uprightly. Holy a right seed. Guess what we did to mess things up? Next part of the verse. Come on. But Come they on. have sought out many inventions. But we have sought out many inventions. You see what we've done? This is what the Lord is saying. We decided to invent evil things. Now we are inventors of evil things now. You understand? The Lord made us uprightly. We decided to sort out many inventions to go outside of the order that the Lord has set for us. Yes. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, praises. Yes, sir. So now what we are reading here is King Solomon is explaining to us because remember, this is the, this, this, this right now, this is when he recovered himself. So now he's showing us, he's teaching us, listen, I've been through this. Don't go through it. This is the reason why you mustn't go through this stuff. I'm telling you, don't go after these things. So he says, I've, uh, he says, he says, Lord, this only have I found. Because he was a man of wisdom. You understand? He experimented with a lot of stuff. He says that God has made man upright. Remember, King Solomon was shown the beginning of time. He was shown the beginning, the ending, and the midst of time. So he understands man. He understood the psychology of the man, of a man. You understand? His mindset, how he thinks, why he makes the, de the decisions that he makes. King Solomon understood all of that. The reasonings of men. He understood that. If you read Wisdom of Solomon 7 verse 17 down. Okay. So now, let's go back to Jeremiah 2.21. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 21. Come on. Yet I planted thee a noble vine, mm -hmm. holy a right seed. 
Read. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? So how did we become this degenerate plant of a strange vine unto the Most High God? Is because we sought out many inventions. The Lord made us upright and he gave us the commandment so that we can move according to how he wants us to move. We decided not oh, to hell with that. We want to invent new things so we can worship. You understand? Now the Lord says, you are estranged from me now. You are estranged. I don't recognize you. How did you become so degenerate? Look at us as a nation. We have become degenerate as a people. Why? Because of what? Idolatry. We've set up idols in our spirits, in our minds now. And we worship those idols. You understand? Okay. So go back to where he was at. Ezekiel chapter 14. Let's go back there. Ezekiel 14. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 5 again. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 5. Mm -hmm. That I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. You see that thing? We are estranged from the Lord through our idols, the Lord is saying. Guess what? Idolatry is a real thing. It's the reason why we are at the bottom of society, because of worshipping idols, going after strange gods. You understand? The first commandment we are breaking, thou shalt have no other gods before me. We decided to break that commandment. And guess what? The rest of the commandment was broken as well. We broke all the commandments. But the first commandment, that's the number one on the list. Covetousness, which is idolatry. You understand? Which affects the rest of the commandments. Now watch this. Go back to First Peter again. First Peter 2. First Peter chapter 2 verse 1. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Read. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and mm -hmm. all guile Read. and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. So now we are commanded to lay these things aside. It says, lay aside all malice and all guile, hypocrisies, envies, and all evil speakings. The, for, for in order for you to lay aside these, to lay these things aside, you understand? Read the next verse so we can understand the vein of what is being explained here. Read verse 2. First Peter chapter 2 verse 2. Mm -hmm. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word Come on. that ye may grow thereby. Now watch this. You see verse 2? Verse 2 is letting you know so listen, if you lay aside the things that are written in verse 1, verse 2 will happen. So now you wonder why you don't grow in this truth. You understand? You are stagnant. You are in the same place spiritually. You don't grow. You know why? Because verse 1 is not applied. That's why you don't see any growth in your walk. You are not growing. You are a spiritual midget. Okay? Because why? You have not laid aside the malice, the gall, the hypocrisies, the envies, the evil speakings. You have not let those things go. So now verse 2 doesn't happen to you. You wonder why you're not growing. And because you don't grow, the things in verse 1 will continue to increase in your spirit. They'll continue to cause what? Um, they'll continue to cause a cancer in your spirit. Because verse 2 is not happening. And because verse 2 is not happening, guess what? You don't want to go. Because in order for you to lay these things aside, you have to acknowledge they exist. You understand? You have to be real with yourself. Watch this. Give me the book of Hosea, chapter 5, verse 15. Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. Hosea, Hosea. chapter 5, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Hosea on. chapter 5, verse 15. Read. I will go and return to my place. Mm -hmm. Till they acknowledge their offense. Read. And seek my face. Mm -hmm. In the affliction, they will seek me early. This is what the Lord wants. He says he will go and return to his place until we, the children of Israel, acknowledge our offenses and what and repent so the only way for you to lay aside the the idols that we read about in the book of first Peter 2 you have to acknowledge your offenses regarding these idols that you've set up in your spirit you have to acknowledge them you have to acknowledge that these are the offenses that i'm in the midst of therefore i must what i must repent from these things because if you don't First Peter 2 verse 2 will not happen. You will remain, you will be, you will be a spiritual midget 
and guess what you're gonna start to you're gonna start these things are gonna start to manifest in your spirit you understand why because you don't want to acknowledge that these things exist watch this the most High god gave us a way of doing this thing watch this give me give me the book of first kings chapter 8 verse 46 first kings 8 46 okay first kings chapter 8 verse 46 watch this first kings chapter 8 verse 46 mm -hmm. if they sin against thee for there is no man that sinneth not because all israel we broke all the commandments you understand if they sin against thee did we do that yes we sinned against the lord for there is no man that sinneth not because all israel we broke the commandments read and thou be angry with them was the lord angry with us is the lord still angry with yes the most High god is still mad with us you understand he's still angry look at the conditions that we're in this is a clear example of the lord being mad with us he's mad as hell you understand look at the things that we have to go through look at the things that we went through during the transatlantic the sub-sahara the silk road you understand all these captivities that we've been under guess what colonization forced migration okay apartheid all of these oppressive system that were set up against us that was an example of the most high god's wrath and anger because we what we broke his commandments you understand and now that we're still in captivity this day part of his anger is that we paying tax we you paying that you understand because you don't want to take care of levi you see that thing? We didn't want to take care of Levi. Now we have to pay for the stuff that we have to pay now for not taking care of Levi because that's why now your salary, you get taxed because you don't want to take care of Levi. Okay? So the most High God, he's mad with us. He's upset. And being upset is an understatement. Okay? Read that again, verse 46. First Kings chapter 8, verse 46. Mm -hmm. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not. Read. And thou be angry with them, mm -hmm. and deliver them to the enemy. And because he was mad with us, he delivered us to our enemies. We are in the lands of our enemies right now, in their hands. Go ahead. So that they carry them away captives unto mm -hmm. the land of the enemy, far or near. Because right now, we are in the lands of our, our enemies. We are captives in these lands. You understand? We are strangers and pilgrims. This is not our land. This is not our rest. Like many of our people believe that this is their country. South Africa is our country. No. The, the Shemitic Bantus, we are, guess what? We are, we, 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 this is not our homeland. You understand? This is not our homeland. Even look at the way that we behave in the lands of our captivity. You understand? Read. Yet if they shall bethink themselves. They, you see, that's the first thing we must do. The first thing that we will do is bethink ourselves. He says, yet if they shall bethink themselves, remember who they are, where in the lands of our captivity, where the Lord delivered us. Go ahead. Yet if they shall bethink themselves, in the land whether they were carried captives mm -hmm. and repent you see that thing that's the second part that's the, the next step the first step is you must bethink yourself remember who you are in the land of your captivity once you know that you are israel the next thing is you must repent you don't repent as a baptist you don't repent as a jehovah's witness you don't repent as a mzalwani no you repent as an israelite you understand you repent as an Israelite. That's how you repent. Go ahead. And make supplication unto thee in mm -hmm. the land of them that carry them captive, saying. You see that you see that part right there? It says, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carry them captives. So supplication meaning you must humble yourself. That's what it means, supplication. You must humble yourself. You must acknowledge your offenses. That's how you repent. You repent and what? And make supplication unto the Most High. You must humble yourself. You must open your mouth and confess what you have done. And the Most High will tell you exactly what to say. Go ahead. 
saying, we have sinned mm -hmm. and have done perversely. Pray. We have committed wickedness. You see that thing? We have sinned. We have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. That's, these are the things that we must what? We must utter out of our mouth. That's how we make supplication unto the Lord. Read. And so return unto thee with all their heart mm -hmm. and with all their soul Read. in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land. Meaning well, we, which, must, we, must face, we must face towards Jerusalem and pray. When we make the prayers, we, we make supplication unto the Most High God, we face Jerusalem, our homeland. Go ahead. Which thou gavest unto their fathers, mm -hmm. the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Read. Then hear thou their prayer, and their supplication in heaven thy dwelling place, mm -hmm. and maintain their cause. That's the only time when the Lord will maintain our cause. That He says, then hear thou their prayer. The only time when the Lord will hear our prayer, guess what? We must bethink ourselves, remember who we are, that we are the children of Israel, and repent as the children of Israel. You understand? And make supplication and confess our sins. Then the Lord says, then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven thy dwelling place and maintain their cause. That's the only time that will happen. Verse, 9, verse 49 is not going to happen if verse 47 and verse 48 didn't happen. So there's a stipulation here. This is a conditional statement. The only time the Lord says he's going to hear our prayers, we must acknowledge, we must confess. You understand? And he tells us exactly what to say. And we must speak about the things that we know we have done and the things we know we are still doing. Keep it real with the most high. Then the Lord says, I'm going to hear your prayers on that day. You understand? But as, still, as long as you are still faking the funk, as long as you are still um, acting, the Lord says, I'm not going to hear nothing. You're coming fake to me, guess what? I'm not going to res respond to nothing you say. The most high God has given us the blueprint. We just have to apply it. You understand? Now, go back to where he was at now. Go back to uh, First Peter's. First Peter 2, verse 1 again. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Read. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and mm -hmm. all cow Read. and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. Excuse me. So now what you want to notice here is in order for you to lay aside all these things, you have to acknowledge that they exist. First. Secondly, once you acknowledge that they exist, guess what you must do? You will you, you 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 lay them aside by doing what? By acknowledging your offenses and repenting. What we read in the book of First Kings, those are the steps of repentance. That's what the Lord wants. Then He says, then you are going to grow in this truth. Then you will be able to receive the sincere milk of the word. Then you'll see growth. Until then, you're not going to see that. You understand? You are not going to see growth. You will still, you will, you will be a spiritual midget. Okay? Watch this. Give me Ephesians 4.31. The book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Let's read that. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31. Mm -hmm. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. You see what he's saying? He's saying, listen, what we are reading here, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Ephesus. He said, listen, this is what, because this is what was going on in, at, in, the, in the church at Ephesus. This is what was going on. Same thing the Apostle Peter was writing, if you read 1 Peter 1 and 1, you'll see the churches was writing to the strangers which are scattered, which are scattered abroad. Okay? So now, these are the things that was going on in the church at Ephesus. There was bitterness in the church. There was wrath. There was anger. There was clamor, disrespect. There was evil speaking. You understand? There was malice. There was guile. These are the idols that our forefathers and foremothers was worshipping at Ephesus. Guess what? So it is today. Because these are idols. 
This is not the work of this. This is not the fruit of the spirit. This is the works of the flesh. You understand? Read that again. Verse 31. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31. Mm -hmm. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. With all malice. He says these things must be put away from you. Watch this. Give me the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 8 now. Colossians 3 verse 8. Colossians chapter 3 verse 8. Mm -hmm. But now... But now you also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. You see what he's saying? Because guess what? Read verse 5 so we can understand. Read verse 5 now. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Stop right there. He says, mortify, meaning deaden, repent. Lay aside, like the Apostle Peter said. You must lay these things aside. You understand? Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Because these things don't happen in heaven. No, they're happening here on earth. Because that's where we're at, on earth. And here on earth, there's a lot of evils that are going on in these last days. You understand? So that's why it says, mortify your members which are upon the earth. Okay? Come on. Fornication. Fornication, mm -hmm. uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And covetousness, which is idolatry. Go ahead, verse 6. For which things sake, the mm. wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Because the disobedience is mentioned in verse 5. That's why he said mortify, meaning deaden, because this was the disobedience that we was involved in. You understand? Read. In the which you also walked sometime when you lived in them. You see that? Because we was living in these things. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. I'm jumping ahead. Read verse 7 again. Colossians chapter 3 verse 7. Mm -hmm. In the which you also walked sometime when you, when you lived in them. You see that thing? It says, it says in the which ye also, ye also, the, the saints at Ephesus, you see what it says? He says, you also walk some time when you lived in them. He's talking to them back then. He's still talking to us today. Okay, come on. But now, ye also put of all these. You see what he says? Now he's commanding them. Hold on. He says, but now he also put of all these, meaning put these things off. Lay them aside. Like we read about in First Peter. Read. Anger, wrath, malice, mm -hmm. blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. You see that thing? He's commanding us to put these things off, to lay them aside so we can grow in this truth. That's what he's saying. Because these things, these, these, all these what we just read, these, these are sins that goes against God's commandments, which we all are supposed to repent from. Now watch this. Give me First Timothy 1. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 8. First Timothy chapter one verse eight. Mm -hmm. But we know that the law is good. If a man use it lawfully, he says, "We know that the law is good. The laws of God is good. If a man use it lawfully, meaning what? Don't use the laws of God deceitfully." Go ahead. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. Stop right there. He says, "Knowing this, remember verse eight says, we know that the law is good." Knowing that, we know that what the law is not made for a righteous man. These laws of the Most High, the laws that are written in this book, was not made for righteous men and women. You understand? He's going to tell you what the law, who the law is made for. Go ahead. But for the lawless and disobedient. You see that thing? The laws of God were made for what? For the lawless and the disobedient. Okay, that's us. Go ahead. For the ungodly and for the sinners. For the ungodly and for the sinners. Read on. For unholy and profane. For unholy and profane. Read that. Our people. Go ahead. For murderers of fathers 
and mm-hmm. murderers of mothers. You see that thing? That goes into gangs. Murderers of mothers, murderers of fathers. That, these are the things that you see on Daily Sun, you see on ETV, you see on EWN, so on and so forth. Go ahead. For men, for manslayer, meaning what? Those that are commit, those that have committed manslaughter. You understand? Go ahead. Hmm. Okay, you the, the 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 I can't hear you. The sound is 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 very. You are in the matrix. Okay. But uh, read verse ten again. First Timothy chapter one verse ten. For mm-hmm. homes, for them are themselves with mankind. You see that thing? For homongers, for them that defile themselves for with mankind. Stealers. Hold on. For homongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind. That goes into homosexual, lesbians, and gays, and all that. Okay. For men stealers, those that steal men. Give me that in Jeremiah 5. Because that is a big thing in now today, actually. We we in here in, 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 in Jovek, it's a big thing. Human trafficking and all that. Yes, that's human trafficking, by the way. Men stealers. Okay. Sentin is, is one of the hot spots of human trafficking, by the way. Human trafficking and sex trafficking. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse. Jeremiah 5 is 26. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 5 is 26. Go ahead. For among my people are found wicked men. For among my people are what? For among my people are found wicked men. Are found wicked men. Go ahead. They lay wait. They do what? They lay wait. They lay wait. Come on. As he that sits his knees. Read. They set a trap. Mm-hmm. They catch men. You see that thing? They set a trap. They catch men. Men stealers. You understand? Kidnapping. That's what this is going into. Let's go back. First Timothy 1. First Timothy 1 and verse 10 again. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 10. Go ahead. For homongers, for men that defile themselves with mankind, mm-hmm. for men stealers, for men stealers, kidnapping. Go ahead, human trafficking. Read. For liars, for liars, those that tell lies. Go ahead. For perjured persons, for perjured persons, I mean those that commit perjury, like they go to court and then the the the, the magistrate or the 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 judge will say you must. Put your hand on the Bible and swear that what you are saying is the truth and nothing but the truth. You say, I swear, knowing that you are lying. Perjury. Go ahead. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Give me that in Proverbs 4. Anything that is contrary to sound doctrine. Proverbs 4 verse 2 real quick. Anything that is contrary to sound doctrine. What is the sound doctrine? Watch this. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 2. Mm-hmm. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. You see that thing? For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. That's the sound doctrine. Anything that is contrary to the laws of God, that is not sound doctrine. You understand? So when it says we know that the law is not, is not the law was not made for a righteous man. Guess what? Our people in the Christian church, they, 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 this, this scripture right here in First Timothy, the majority of them, they say it doesn't apply to them. That's what they say. They say it doesn't apply to them. Go back to First Timothy 1. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 11. Watch this. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 11. Read. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, mm-hmm. which was committed to my trust, So now the Apostle Paul is telling Timothy, listen, the law is according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God. So the laws of the Most High God, that's the glorious gospel. God's commandments, that's the glorious gospel of Christ. Keeping of the commandments. You understand? Now, let's go back. Go back to Colossians chapter 3 verse 8. Colossians 3 verse 8. Read what you got. Colossians chapter 3 verse 8. Mm-hmm. But now ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, 
filthy communications out of, out of your mouth. So now, in order for us to lay these things, in order for us to grow in this truth, we have to lay these things aside. You understand? You have to let it go. You have to let it go. Give me that in Philippians, okay? Chapter 3, verse 13. Philippians 3, verse 13. Watch this. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, mm -hmm. forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. You see what he's saying? He says, forgetting those things which are behind. You have to let it go. You have to let go because guess what? As long as you're holding on to it, you don't want to let go of these idols that you are worshiping, that you've set up in your spirit. Guess what? They are going to defile you. Give me that in Mark chapter 7 verse 21. Because Christ talked about this thing. Mark 7 verse 21. Watch this. Mark chapter 7 verse 21. Read. Really? For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Mm -hmm. You see that thing? Don't you? Out of the mind. Hold on. Out of the mind of men, proceed evil thoughts. That's why the Lord is saying in Ezekiel, it says, they have set up idols in their heart. Now Christ is going to tell us what proceed out of the mind of men. You understand? He's going to give us the list of idols that Ezekiel is talking about when he says they've set up idols in their heart. These are idols that Christ is going to mention here. Okay? Read verse 21 again. Mark chapter 7 verse 21. Go ahead. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Mm -hmm. Adulteries. You see that Adulteries. So this is one. These are, these are idols here. These are all unclean spirits. Adulteries. Fornication. Sexual sins. Go ahead. Murders. Hatred also, come on. Theft. Being a damn thief, read. Covetousness. Covetousness, go ahead. Wickedness. Mm. Deceit. Lasciviousness. An evil eye. Read. Blasphemy. Pride. Foolishness. Go ahead, next verse, come on. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. You see what Christ is saying? He says, all these evil things, they come from within and they defile the man. They are going to corrupt you. They are going to defile your spirit. They will destroy you. You understand? That's what Christ is teaching us right here. Because of what? Because of setting up idols in our minds. So watch this. Go back to Colossians real quick for me. Colossians 3, verse 8 again. No, 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 no. You know what? Go back to Philippians. Go back to Philippians. Hmm. Philippians, chapter 3, verse 13. Again. Philippians, chapter 3, verse 13. Go ahead. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, Ray? forgetting those things which are behind mm -hmm. and reaching forth, to those things which are before. So now what you want to notice is that it says you must forget. Forget those things which are behind. So in order for you to forget, guess what you must do? You have to replace the old memories with new ones. You see that? You have to replace the evil with good. That's an active process. It's not a passive one. You have to be actively doing it so that the evils can be pushed out and the laws of the most High God dwell in your spirit. Because if you don't do that, you don't actively do it, guess what? They are going to defile you. They are going to destroy you, the Lord is teaching us. You understand? Read that again, verse 13. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Go ahead. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended Mm -hmm. But this one thing I do, really? forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Those things which are before is what? The kingdom. You understand? We must reach unto those things which are what before us. Watch this. Give me that in uh, 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Let's read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. 
Mm-hmm. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Read. And all things, all things are passed away. Behold, all, all things are become new. Now that's the key right there. He says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You are a new creation. You are born again. He says, old things are passed away. Those, those are the things that we read about in Philippians. He says, forgetting those things which are behind. That's the old things. You understand? They are passed away. No more. He says, behold, all things are become new. Meaning everything about you must be new. The way you think, the way you dress, what you eat, how you eat, so on and so forth. You understand? Which high holidays you celebrate. Everything about you must be brand new. Why? Because now you're a new creature. If you're a new creature, why you still be dragging those things that are behind? But the Lord is saying, let it go. You understand? The most High God said, let it go. Repent from it. Okay? Because here's another thing. Brothers do it too. Sisters more so. Where you find that you are still complaining, you, you are still holding on or you are still dealing with something that, no, when I was three years old, when I was four years old, I was molested. How old are you now? No, I'm 20 something. Please let it go. Okay? The scripture says, let it go. Let it go. So you can grow. A lot of you, you don't want to do that. Brothers too, I was molested when I was a child. This happened to me. That happened to me. Okay, so now you have the Bible. Now what? What you going to do? Are you going to apply it or not? That's the question you must ask yourself. You see what I'm saying? That's going to define what type of person, what type of character you're dealing with. What type of person you are. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 3. Titus 3, verse 3. Okay? Titus chapter 3, verse 3. Read what you got. He also was sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, mm -hmm. living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. So now you see what he's saying. He says, for we also. So he's, like, he's, he's including himself here, the apostle Paul. He says, for we also ourselves were all, he says, ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived. Saving diverse lusts, meaning idols, multitude of diverse idols, you know, and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. You understand? Because the laws of God was not with us. We was not keeping the commandments when we was wicked Negroes in the world, wicked Negroes and wicked Negresses in the world. We didn't keep the commandments. We didn't know we was Israel. Now we know we are Israel. We must keep the commandments of the Most High. So the stuff that you used to deal with back in the day when you were three years old, you better let that thing go. You understand? You better let it go. And deal with what is, what is in front of you. What is in front of us? Guess what? Give me that in 1 Maccabees. Okay, 12 verse 9. 1 Maccabees chapter 12 and verse... 1 Maccabees 12 verse 9. Read that. This is what you have at your disposal now. No more excuses. Watch this. First Maccabees 12 verse 9. Come on. First Maccabees chapter 12 verse 9. Read. Therefore, we also, albeit we need none of these things, for that we have the holy books of scripture in our hands to comfort us. You see that thing? You have the scriptures with you now to comfort you. You have no excuses now. You understand? You can't be holding on to somebody that, something that happened to you in the world. No, no, no. Mm -mm. You have to keep the commandments. You understand? You are a new creature. You are born again. All things are become new. All old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You, are, you have become new. You understand? Watch this. Give me... Go back to 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. Okay. 1 Peter 2 verse 1 again. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Read. Wherefore, laying aside all malice mm -hmm. and all guile. Stop and right hypocrisy. there. It says, laying aside all malice. All malice. Give me wisdom of Solomon chapter 16, verse 14. 
It says, laying aside all malice, okay, Mal ma malignity, evil intentions, evil intent, that's malice, okay? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 14. Let's read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 14. Go ahead. A man indeed killeth through his malice. You see that thing? You see what malice can do? Death. Malice can bring death to someone. It says, a man indeed killeth through his malice. Evil intentions. You understand? Premeditation. Read. A man indeed killeth through his malice. And the spirit, when it, when it is gone forth, returns So his not. spirit, his spirit, so it says, a man indeed killed through his malice. So his evil intentions, guess what? It says, and the spirit, meaning the spirit behind the malicious intent. It says, guess what? It says, when it is gone forth, because remember, he is planning evil, he's going to execute the evil. It says, when it is gone forth, meaning his spirit, when it is gone forth, returneth not. Meaning you cannot... You cannot recover that man. You can't recover that sister. Okay? Read on. Neither the soul receiveth up, cometh again. You see that thing? Neither the soul that receiveth up, cometh, cometh again. You cannot deliver them out of that sin. Because why? They are one with that sin. You understand? And what is the sin? Malice. Evil intentions. And ill will. Okay? Watch this. Sirach 28 verse 7. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 28, verse 7. Remember the commandments and bear no malice to thy neighbor. You see that thing? He says, remember the commandments and bear no malice to thy neighbor. That your brother, that your sister, don't grudge against your neighbor. Your sister, your brother. You understand? Read. Remember the covenant to the highest and wink at ignorance. You see that thing? It says, remember the covenant of the highest of God. Remember the, the covenant of the Most High and wink at ignorance. You understand? Because what are they ignorant of? They are ignorant of God's commandments. Give me that in Romans 10. They are ignorant of God's commandments. You see, our people in the world, they are ignorant of God's laws. Okay? But now in this truth, the brothers and sisters, you are not ignorant of God's laws because you know who you are. You know what is required of you. Keep the commandments. Fear the Lord. Our brothers and sisters out there in the world, they are ignorant. Okay? Romans 10. Romans chapter 10 and verse 3. The book of Romans chapter 10 verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness mm -hmm. and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. You see, that's the point. They are ignorant of God's righteousness. God's righteousness is what? Give me that in Romans chapter 2. They have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. No, Romans 8 verse 4. Read that. The book of Romans chapter 8 verses 4. Read. That the righteousness of the law of the white people in us of the law the righteousness of the law. The righteousness of the law. Okay, God's righteousness is his laws. Read. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Mm -hmm. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You see that part when it says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. That means what? We, how do we fulfill the righteousness of the law? We apply it. That's how we fulfill the righteousness of the law. We apply the laws of the Most High God to our lives. You understand? Because what? Our people have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of the Most High. So that's the ignorance. You understand? Of our brothers and sisters in the world. Okay, let's go back. Sirach 28, verse 7. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 28, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Remember the commandments. And pay no malice to thy neighbor. Remember the covenant of the highest and wink at ignorance. You see that thing? Wink, wink at their ignorance. Why? Because they don't know any better. But when they come in, they learn the scriptures, the commandments, the law, how to apply it. They are no longer moving in the spirit of ignorance. 
You understand? They are not moving with the spirit of ignorance anymore like they used to in the world. All right? Watch this. Give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4. We are dealing with malicious intent. Malice. Okay? And an intent to do evil. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter. You see that thing? Into a malicious soul. Somebody that has an evil intent is as wisdom is not going to enter into that spirit. Okay, read. No, dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. Dwell in a body that subjects themselves, subject itself to sin. Meaning they give their, themselves to sin. They don't fight. They just give themselves to sin. Guess what? He says wisdom will not enter into a mind like that. You understand? Watch this. Uh, give me Second Ezra, chapter 3, verse 20. Second Ezra. Let's see with our forefather, Adam. Okay, what the Lord say about him. Second Ezra 3, verse 20. Second book of Ezra, chapter 3, verse 20. And yet took us thou not away from then a wicked heart. Mm-hmm. That thy law might, might bring forth fruit in them. That the laws of God might bring forth fruit in us. Because that's what it's supposed to do. To bring fruit in us. The fruit is what we read about in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. Go ahead. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart transgressed. You see that thing? He and he, was overcome. He was hold on. He was bearing a wicked heart. He says the first Adam... Bearing a wicked heart transgressed. He broke the commandments of the Most High. He made excuses. He blamed the Lord for, for sending him Eve. Go ahead. Bearing a wicked heart transgressed and was overcome. So be all they that are born of him. That's talking about us, the sons of God, the sons of Adam, the direct lineage of Adam. You understand? But when it says the first Adam, for the first Adam bearing a wicked heart transgressed, because Adam, the reason why the Adam, Adam the, because when, mm, let me see if I want to go into this. Uh, in Genesis 3, Adam, he, he committed what is called presumptuous sin. He wasn't confused. He wasn't deceived. That needed to happen so that what so that later on the need the, the need for Christ, we can see the need for Christ. That's why. Okay, go ahead. I'll just put it like that. Read. Thus, infirmity was made permanent. You see that thing? Sin was made permanent. Go ahead. And the law also in the heart of the people with the with the malign. With the malignity. malignity. Malignity of the root. Meaning what? The maliciousness of the root of sin that was in Adam. You understand? Read. With the malignity of the root. So that the good departed away and the evil abode still. You see that thing? It says the, root, the good departed away and the evil abode still. Unto this day. That's why the laws was made for not for a righteous man. But for the liars, the, the sinners, the manslayers, the whoremongers, you understand, so on and so forth. Okay, because why? Because the evil abode still. Because evil is still abiding this day. You understand? So that wicked heart of Adam, it had malignity of the root of evil. You understand? That's why it, 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 he could not get to the level of perfection. Why? Because Christ was to come so that he can give us the way to reach the level of perfection by his blood, not by the blood of goats and bulls. No, by his own blood. You understand? Watch this. Give me, now go back to First Peter. Okay. First Peter 2 verse 1. Um, give me First Peter 2 verse 1 again. First Peter chapter 2 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, laying aside all malice, and all guile, and hypocrisies, and envies, and evil speaking. And all evil speaking. So now, we deal with malice, having malicious intent. 
You understand? And all guile. Now, that's a big one. Bitterness. That's guile. Give me Exodus 21 verse 14. Watch this. Exodus chapter 21 verse 14. Let me show you how deep this goes. The root of bitterness. Okay. Read that. Exodus, Exodus 21 verse 14. The book of Exodus, chapter 21, verse 14. Mm -hmm. But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guile. To do what? To slay him with guile. To slay him with guile. It says, if a man come presumptuously, meaning what? This is premeditated. Upon his neighbor to slay him with guile. So this was premeditated murder. Okay, go ahead. To slay him with guile. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt take him from mine altar, that he may die. You see what the Lord did? So premeditated murder is what? The, it was punishable by death. This is not manslaughter. Okay? This is murder, period. Because it's premeditated. You planned it out and all of that. Guess what? This thing is the same thing as the idols that we set up in our minds. You understand? It's the same thing because it brought it brings forth death to who? To us. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews. Okay? Because remember, because of guile, this man, he killed his neighbor, right? Because of guile. Bitterness. Watch this. Give me Hebrews 12. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15. Watch this. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. You know what? Hmm. Start at verse... Start at verse 11. Hebrews 12, verse 11. Let's start there. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. Read. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. But you see grievous. what he's saying? He says, no chastening for the present seemeth to be grievous. Meaning what? When you are corrected at that moment... It doesn't, it doesn't feel good. It, does, it, it, it doesn't seem to be what? It says, seems to be what? Joyous, but grievous. Okay, come on. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruits of righteousness unto them which are, ex which are exercised thereby. So now, but he says, nevertheless, afterward, meaning later on, when your mind comes back, you start to realize, you know what? Let me just apply this. Let me apply this so I can get myself right. Then it says, it's going to what? It yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Because you exercise the laws of God to your life. You apply them to bring change. Okay, come on. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. You see what he's saying? He says, because, he says therefore, Lift up your hands. Lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Because some, some brothers and sisters, you get, they get corrected or at last goes out, they become offended. Guess what? Now, they don't want to seek counsel anymore. It always goes back to counsel. Because why? They, now, they, they, it, they, it's just proving that they don't really believe what this is about. They don't believe that the Bible is 99.9% .9 confrontational. And correction. You understand? That's what the Bible is like that. So now it says, lift up the hands which hang down. Some brothers and sisters will be hanging, their hands will be hanging down because correction was brought out. You understand? There's no need for that to happen. You understand? You have to get back up and keep moving. This is a war. You have to fight. Okay? Come on. And make straight paths for your feet. Mm -hmm. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. Read. But let it rather be healed. You see what he's saying? He says, but let it rather be healed. Because it says what? Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. Guess what? Because as long as you, you are still, you are, your hands are still hanging down, you are not happy about what came out and all of that, guess what's going to happen? is not going to be healed. That's what, you are, that's what he's letting us know, the Apostle Paul. But he says, but let, let, rather, let it rather be healed. 
guile, bitterness, malice. You see that thing? Those things will defile, will destroy you. Read on. Follow peace with all men mm -hmm. and holiness without, without which no man shall see the Lord. That's why it says follow peace with all men. That's what we just read. Have salt among yourself. Have salt in yourself. That's what we read in Mark 9 last night. Mark, 9, Mark chapter 9 verse 49 and 50. When Christ says we must have salt. You understand? So guess what? This peace is talking about the unity of the brethren. Coming together, one mind, one spirit. All thinking the same thing. Not one person going over there. This one person going over there. There's, so there's division now. You understand? Read. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Lest any roots of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. You see what bitterness will do? Bitterness will defile you, will destroy you. So he's saying, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Meaning what? You don't get, you're not given a chance to repent no more. You may, meaning what? You go back into the world. You understand? You lose patience. So now it says, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you. Because guess what? That bitterness, that guile is going to trouble you. Because the reason why it's troubling is because you did not put it out of the way. You didn't let it go. So how is it going to be healed if you don't want to let it go? And you don't want to admit that you've got bitterness in your heart. Okay? It says, thereby many be defiled, that thereby many drop dead because of it. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms 32 verse 2. Give me Psalms 32 and verse 2. Psalms chapter 32 verse 2. Read. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, mm -hmm. and in whose spirit there is no guile. You see that part right there? And in whose spirit there is no guile. Meaning in your spirit, bitterness is not found in your spirit. Because that bitterness is brought about by envy and hatred and jealousy. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Psalms 34 verse 13. Psalms 34 verse 13. Keep thy tongue from evil mm -hmm. and thy lips from speaking gal. You see that thing? Because the tongue is very dangerous. Okay? That's why the Lord is commanding, he says, keep thy tongue from evil. Meaning what? If you don't have anything constructive to say, nothing righteous to say, just be quiet. And thy lips from speaking guile, bitterness. You understand? Watch this. Give me Psalms 55 verse 11. Psalms 55 verse 11. Psalms chapter 55 verse 11. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Mm -hmm. Deceit and guile depart not from her streets. You see that thing? Deceit and guile depart not from her streets. So what you want to notice is that the most High God, he keeps telling us, listen, guile, guile, guile. Because if you notice where we are as a people, you understand? You look at the level of guile and bitterness and deceit that, is, um, that exists in Israel, among our people, in the world, and in Israel, by the way, in, within, in the truth. Why? Because 1 Peter 2 verse 1, they are not applying that to lay these things aside, to repent. They don't want to repent. You are holding, you are holding on to the bitterness, the jealousy, the guile, the envy, the hatred, as if you are going to get a prize. Can you imagine that? You are holding on to these demons as if you are going to get a prize for doing it. How well you contain the demon. No. You're going to get death, you understand, for containing the demon. Our job is to lay these things aside, is to repent. That's what the Lord is looking for. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of John chapter 1 verse 47. John 1, verse 47. John chapter 1, verse 47. Read. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and mm -hmm. said of him, 
Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. You see that thing? If you are an Israelite indeed, there is not going to be guile in your spirit. So now you have to ask yourself, I've got bitterness in my heart. I've got anger. I've got hatred. I've got jealousy. So am I an Israelite? No, you are not. You are not an Israelite. You are an individual light who acts like an Israelite. Because read that again, verse 47. Come on, John 1, 47. Read that. John chapter 1, verse 47. Mm -hmm. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. You see that thing? In whom is no guile. Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Peter 2.21. Okay? 1 Peter 2.21. verse 21. Because this is the example that Nathaniel was following. Because Nathaniel was also following what? The example he was following John. Now they are following Christ because John, we paved the way for Christ. 1 Peter 2.21. Read that. 1 Peter 2.21. Read that. For even Read. here and too were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving mm -hmm. us an example that ye should follow his steps. You see that thing? So Christ left us an example that we should follow his steps. Go ahead. Who did no sin. Meaning he didn't break the laws of neither God. Neither was God Read. found. He didn't break God's commandments. Neither. Hold on. He didn't break God's laws. He says, who did no sin? Christ did not break any of the law, any of the commandments of the Most High God. Because the proof of that, give me that in Isaiah 42, 21. Okay. Isaiah 42, verse 21. Watch this. Yes, yeah, read that. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 21. Mm -hmm. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Read. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. He will. So Isaiah is prophesying of what the Lord will do when he when 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 Christ is born. This is when when he when his spirit grows now, you understand, like we read about in Matthew 4 17, Christ's first ministry. Guess what he was doing? He was teaching repentance. You understand? So now Isaiah is prophesying what the Lord will do. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. And that's exactly what he did. That's why it says, who did not sin? Because he magnified the law. He taught us, he reminded us of the law because we forgot that. Okay. First Peter 2, 2 verse 22 again. First Peter chapter 2 verse 22. Read. Who did no sin. Mm -hmm. Neither was guile found in his mouth. You see that thing? Neither was guile, bitterness found in his mouth. Because he did not sin. He, he kept the command. He magnified the law and, make, and made the laws of God honorable. Okay. First Peter 3 verse 10. Read that. First Peter chapter 3 verse 10. Mm -hmm. For he that will love life and see good days, let him restrain his tongue from evil. Let him what? Let him restrain his tongue from evil. No, no. Let him refrain. Let him refrain his tongue from evil. Okay, come on, read it again. First Peter chapter 3, verse 10. Mm -hmm. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. Read. And his lips, that they speak no guile. You see that thing? That his lips, that they speak no guile. Watch this. Give me Revelation 14, verse 5. Now, this is the 144. You want to be part of the 144? You will lay us, you will lay these things aside. You understand? Watch this. Revelation 14, verse 5. Revelation chapter 14, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And in their mouth was found no guile. Mm -hmm. For they are for they are without fault before the throne of God. Let's talk about the 144. The 144 says. You're not going to find guile in their mouth because they follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. Watch this. Um, read verse 4. Revelation 14 verse 4. Revelation chapter 14 verse 4. Read. 
These are they which were not defiled with women, mm -hmm. for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Come on. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. You see that thing? That's why it says no guile was found in their mouth. Why? Because they follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Meaning whatever the law says to do, they are going to do it. The 144 will not make excuses when it comes to this book. That's why, they, that's why when we read in 1 Peter 2.22, it says, Who did not sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Because we would what? Walk after the footsteps of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay? Go back to 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter 2, verse 1. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Read. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and mm -hmm. all guile. And all guile. Bitterness. Go ahead. And hypocrisies. And hypocrisies. Watch this. Give me Luke 12 and 1. Luke. No, no. Before you get me Luke, give me Matthew 5 verse 20. Matthew chapter 5 verse 20. Matthew chapter 5 verse 20. For I say unto you. Mm -hmm. That except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. You see what he's saying right there? He says, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So what was the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees? Because the Lord is commanding us here, says, we must exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. What was the problem they had? Give me that in Luke 12 and 1. Luke. Luke chapter 12 and verse 1. Luke chapter 12 verse 1. Read. In the meantime, when they were gathered together in an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they chode upon one another, that they chode one upon another. He began to say unto his disciples, first of all, mm -hmm. Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. You see that thing? So the righteousness, when it says, ex except the right, your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, he says, you're not going to get the kingdom. So now he's telling us what was the quote-unquote righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. He says, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. You see, because what was they doing? Give me Matthew 23, verse 1. Okay. Because in Christianity, they don't read this. This verse that we just read. They don't read that. They just read Matthew 5, 17. They don't even understand what it means. Okay. Matthew 23, verse 1. Watch this. Matthew chapter 23, verse 1. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, Read. The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. They do what? The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Give me second Ezra 1 verse 13. Second Ezra chapter 1 verse 13. The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Okay? Because they were the leaders at that time. During the time when Christ walked the earth. Okay, watch this. Second Ezra chapter 1 verse 13. Second Ezra chapter 1 verse 13. Mm -hmm. I led you through the sea. And in the beginning gave you a large and safe passage. Really? I gave you Moses for a leader. For a what? I gave you Moses for a leader. I gave you Moses for a leader. Moses was a leader. Go ahead. And Aaron for a priest. So what was the scribes and Pharisees? They were the leaders at that time. Go back to where he was at now. Okay, Matthew 23, verse 2 again. Matthew chapter 23, verse 2. Read. The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. They sit in Moses' seat. Because what was they doing? They were the leaders of uh, during this time. You understand? Moses was a leader because guess what? What was Moses doing? He was judging the people righteously. And he set up structure and order and all that. The scribes and Pharisees, they sat in Moses' seat. But guess what? They didn't judge righteously. 
they, they, they didn't, they didn't, they, they knew the law, but they did not apply the law. Okay, next verse. Go ahead. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, mm -hmm. that observe and do, but do not ye after their works. He says, do not ye, but do not ye after you. Do not ye after their works. Meaning, you don't do after, don't do what they do. Do what they say, but don't do what they do. Read that again, verse 3. Matthew chapter 23, verse 3. Mm -hmm. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you, observe. Read. That observe and do. Mm -hmm. And do not ye after their works. Go ahead. For they say and do not. For they say and do not. So that's hypocrisy right there. You understand? So coming back to today, we cannot be going to the streets, be blasting the brothers and sisters out there, but yet we don't, we, we what? We're, we're in the same sense. That's hypocrisy. We will not be a congregation of hypocrites. That's not going to happen here. You understand? We have to make sure that we apply what is written. We must examine ourselves. Every man and woman in here, they must do that thing. Okay? Read that thing again. Verse 3. Matthew chapter 23, verse 3. Read. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you, observe. Mm -hmm. That observe and do. Read. And, but do ye, but do ye not, but do not ye after their works. Read. For they say and do not. For they say and do not. Next verse. Go ahead. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne. You see that thing? That's what the scribes and Pharisees was doing. Heavy burden, you understand? To the people, read. And lay them on men's shoulders. And lay them on men's shoulders, read on. But they themselves will not move with, will not move with them, will not move them with one of their fingers. You see that thing? So they were putting heavy burdens on brothers and sisters but they themselves did not what? Did not put in the work. That's the point. Me, I'm not going to ask you anything that I'm not going to do. Get, don't get it twisted. You understand? Why? Because we have to lead by example. We have to lead by example in this truth. So we cannot go out there and be teaching the gospel to our people. And yet we have found, we found ourselves in the same sense. That's hypocrisy. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 37, verse 19. Okay? We all have to examine ourselves. Watch this. Sirach 37, verse 19. Read that. Ecclesiastes, chapter 37, verse 19. Go ahead. There is one wise. There is one that is wise and teaches many. Read. And yet is unprofitable to himself. You see that thing right there? There is one that is wise and teacheth many. We go out there, we teach our people the laws of the Most High God to repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But he says, and yet is unprofitable to himself. We cannot be like that, brothers. We cannot be like that. We have to be profitable to ourselves also. We must be keeping God's commandments, examining ourselves on a daily basis. Why? Because we are, pre we are what? We are... We are we are presenting our bodies a living sacrifice to sacrifice the, the lusts that our bodies want so that we can be a benefit to our nation. You understand? So we have to sacrifice those lusts. Whatever lust you have, sacrifice it for the benefit of your nation. Because that lust is only for a season. But the kingdom is forever. Understand that? The two cannot be compared. So that's how we have to think. Okay, we must think like that. Read that again, verse 19. Ecclesiastes chapter 37, verse 19. Mm -hmm. There is one that is wise and teacheth many. Read. And yet is unprofitable to himself. So now we have to, we cannot, we cannot, this is hypocrisy. This verse right here, this is an example of hypocrisy. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Sirach chapter 1, verse 29. Ecclesiasticus. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 29. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 29. Read. Be not an hypocrite in the sight of men. Mm -hmm. And take good heed what thou speakest. 
You see that thing? He says, don't be an hypocrite in the sight of men and take good heed what thou speakest. This is what we must examine. Now watch this. Let's go to the book of Job. Okay. Let's go to the book of Job. There's a scripture I want in there. Just give me one second. It's been a while since I looked at this. Mm. Give me the book of Job 15 verse 34. Job chapter 15 verse 34. Come on. For the congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate. You see what the Bible is saying? For the con because it says, for the congregation of hypocrites shall be what? Shall be desolate. Go ahead. And fire shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. You see that thing right there? So these are things that we, you, listen, you have to be brutally honest with what you are dealing with. As individuals and as a congregation, we have to do that. Because I want growth in soldiers of Christ. And we are going to grow. You understand? But that growth is only going to happen when we lay aside malice, envy, hypocrisy. You understand? We have to get rid of these things so that the Lord will, may bless us. We want blessings up in here. Okay? So each and every one of us, we have to look within ourselves and examine these things and be real with yourself. You understand? Read again. Job chapter 15, verse 34. Read. For the congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate. Read. And fire shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. So now, let's go back. Sirach chapter 1, verse 29. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 29. Read. Be not an hypocrite in the sight of men. Mm -hmm. And take good heed what thou speakest. And take good heed what thou speak. How do we speak? Go back to Sirach 37, verse 19. This is how we speak. Sirach 37 verse 19. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 37 verse 19. Mm -hmm. There is one that is wise and teacheth many. Read. And yet is unprofitable to himself. You see that thing? Because that would be what? The spirit of hypocrisy. Go back to First Peter's now. Excuse me. First Peter's chapter 2 verse 1 again. First Peter chapter 2 verse 1. Read. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and mm -hmm. all cow and hypocrisies. And hypocrisies. Read. And envies. And what? And envies. Now that's a big one right there. Watch this. Give me wisdom of Solomon 6.23. And envies. Envy. Okay. Envy. Listen. Envy is very dangerous. I'm not saying the others are not. They are all just as dangerous. Okay, but I see this uh, this one right here. Israel struggles with this. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 6 verse 23. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 verse 23. Mm -hmm. Neither will I go with consuming envy. Read. For such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. Now, now that's heavy right there. It says, neither will I go with consuming envy. You know what it means when something is consuming you? In meaning what? Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 14. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 14. Mm -hmm. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. Right. And our devices are but uncertain. So now when it says the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, meaning what? The things that the, the mortal, the, 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 the sinful man, the sinful woman thinks about is what? Is miserable things, maliciousness. You understand? Envies, guile. That's what's running through the mind of somebody that is what? Somebody that is subject unto sin. It says, for the thoughts of mortal men are miserable and our devices are but uncertain. Because you cannot even predict what's going to happen tomorrow. You can't. Okay. Next verse. Go ahead. For the corruptible body presseth down the soul. You see that thing? The corruptible body is this earthy tabernacle. These weak bodies that we got. Okay. It says what? It presseth down the soul. Because it's fighting. That's what we read about in Romans 7. Go ahead. And the earthly tabernacle weighs down the mind that museth upon many things. 
the mind that museth upon many things. Your mind is musing upon many evil things because that mind is occupied in evil. Watch this. Give me Sarah chapter 12. Okay. Ecclesiasticus chapter 12. Sarah chapter 12 and verse 2. You know what? Read verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 3. Go ahead. There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil. You see that part right there? There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil. Why? Because your mind is musing upon many evil things. You understand? Because you've set up idols in your heart. What makes you think that the things that you're going to think about is going to be righteous things? No. Is going to be what? How to better serve worship and bow down to these idols that you set up in your mind that's what your mind is going to be on your mind is going to be always on that thing the lust of the flesh the mind will always be on that thing because that's what you worship you understand so it will muse upon those things so that's why it says they can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil no good will come to you you are not going to prosper in this truth why because your mind is always musing upon evil things. Okay, read. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 3. They can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil. Mm -hmm. Nor to him that giveth no alms. Nor to him that giveth no alms. Okay, but the point here is, no good will come to him that is always occupied in evil. Because your mind is musing upon many things. You understand? So go back to Wisdom of Solomon now. Chapter 6, verse 23 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 23. Go ahead. Neither will I go with consuming envy. Mm -hmm. For such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. He says, such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. Why is he saying that? Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 3. Because your, your envy is, is always is what is consuming your mind. Because envy is, is, is consumptive. You understand? Envy is a consumptive uh, element. It consumes you. Meaning what? It destroys you from within. You understand? Read that. Wisdom of Solomon 1, verse 3. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For forward thoughts separate from God. You see that thing? And his so hold on, wait. It says for forward thoughts separate from God. Forward. Let's see. Hold on a second. Oh yes. Let me share my screen real quick so we can see the definition of forward. Because that's not a regular Negro word. We don't use that all on a daily. You know, you don't hear the Negro be saying, you know, his mind was so forward. You'll never hear, <laughs> you don't hear stuff like that. Okay. Now, let's read Miriam Webster. Okay, read that. The definition of forward. Mm -hmm. Habitually disposed to disobedience and opposition. You see that thing? Habitually disposed to disobedience and opposition, adverse, meaning what? Going against. So if your mind goes against what is written, guess what? You are not one with the Lord. You are separate from the Most High. You see that thing? Read Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4 again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 4. Mm-hmm. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 3. Yes, verse 3. I'm sorry, verse 3. Come on. For forward thoughts separate from God. You see that thing? So thoughts, when it says forward thoughts, meaning habitually disposed to disobedient and opposing thoughts, they separate from the most High God. Go ahead. And his power. And his power, meaning what? The, give me that in Romans 1, verse 16. And his power, the power of the Lord, Watch this. For what thoughts will separate from the Most High God? Now he's telling you how are they? How is the the thoughts of a forward, uh, of a forward, um, meaning the forward thoughts? 
How do they separate from the most high God's power? Watch this. Read that. Romans 1 verse 16. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Go ahead. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. For it is the power of God unto salvation you to everyone. It says, it says the gospel of Christ, that's the power right there. Because what is the gospel of Christ? We read it in 1 Timothy chapter 1. When it says, the law is according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God. So the laws of God, that's the glorious gospel, that's the power. Meaning what? For our thoughts, guess what? They separate from the power of the most high, meaning what? From the laws of God. Because God's commandments gives you power to change your thinking, to change your lifestyle. You understand? The things I used to do, the laws of God gives you power to let go of to let go of everything that you used to know that your, your flesh used to be accustomed to, okay? Go back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 3 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For forward thoughts separate from God Come on. and his power. Read. When it is tried, mm -hmm. reproveth the unwise. You see what happens? So when you try the power of the Lord, Guess what? The Lord will reprove you because you are not wise. What gives you wisdom? The laws of the Most High God, according to Psalms 19, verse 7. God's commandment is what's going to give you wisdom. You understand? Watch this. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 6, verse 23 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 23. Mm -hmm. Neither will I go with consuming envy. Now watch this. For yeah, keep going, keep going. Watch this. For such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. The Lord says, I'm not give, I'm not gonna trust you with my wisdom. I'm not gonna trust you with my commandments. Why? Because your your mind is forward. Your mind is an is enmity against what is written. You are an enemy when it comes to what is written in the book. You want to go against what, what is written. You understand? Watch this. Give me wisdom of Solomon chapter two. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, because this is the mindset of a, of a, of a, of a forward thought process. The mindset of a forward thought process, this is how it thinks. Wisdom of Solomon 2 verse 12. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 12. Read. Therefore, let us lie in wait for the righteous, mm -hmm. because he is not for our turn, and he is clean, Contrary to our doings. Now, you see that part right there? When it says, because well, when it says, Lay, let us lie in wait for the righteous, this is premeditation. Like we read in Exodus 21 verse 14, it says, because he's not for our turn. Because guess what? You are not for their turn. Let me, let me give you an example of that. Give me, pro, give me Psalms 1. Psalms chapter 1 verse 1. He's not for our turn. Okay. Psalms chapter 1 verse 1. Read that. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. Go ahead. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Come on. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Mm -hmm. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. You see that thing? So those that have forward thought processes, this is how they think about the righteous. You understand? Because the righteous, the blessed, the man that is blessed, is not going to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. What we're reading with Zoma Solomon 2, that's the counsel of the ungodly. That's how they think about the righteous. You understand? Because he does not what? He doesn't stay in the way of sinners. He's not for their turn. We don't follow them. They must follow us. Okay? It says, no sitters in the seat of the scornful. Because the seat of the scornful is those that they are armchair critics. You know armchair critics? They be sitting on the chair and they just criticize from the chair. They don't go, they don't actually go out there. They do field work. You understand? They don't go to war. They don't put boots on the ground. So when you watch TV, some, when you watch these TV television programs where they are interviewing like journalists or talk show hosts and all of that, they don't travel nowhere. Somebody brings them the, the news and all of that. You understand? They don't do leg work. Those are armchair critics. You see that thing? They critique from the chair. No, we go to war. We go to the street. We actually deal with our people face to face. You understand? 
So now, go back to Wisdom of Solomon 2, verse 12 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 12. Read. Therefore, let us lie in wait for the righteous, mm -hmm. because he is not for our turn. He's not for our turn, because guess what? We, can, we are not for the turn of the wicked. We don't follow the wicked. We don't stand in the seat of the scornful, nor stand in the way of sinners. The way of sinners is what? Christmas, New Year, Mother's Day, Father's Day, democracy, voting. You understand? That's the way of sinners. That's the seat of the scornful. Okay. Read. And he is, and he is clean, contrary to our doings. Because us keeping the commandments, guess what? Is a testament against them. Go ahead. Give me that in Proverbs 12, 26. Just so I can prove that. Proverbs 12, verse 26. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. Go ahead. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. Mm -hmm. But the way of the wicked seduces them. You see that thing? The way of the wicked is what we're reading in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2. They want to seduce the righteous because their ways is not according to the laws of God. So they want to destroy those that want to keep the commandment. That's where envy comes in. Because I see it in the camp. I see brothers seeing other brothers getting themselves right. They develop the spirit of envy, anger, jealousy, and hatred. I'm seeing that thing. Read that again. Wisdom, of, I'm in Proverbs 12, 26. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. Go ahead. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. Mm -hmm. But the way of the wicked seduces them. The wicked will seduce you to do what? To return back into the vomit. Watch this. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 2 now. Verse 12 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Therefore, let us lie in wait for the righteous. Come on. Because he is not for our turn. Really? And he is clean, contrary to our doings. Mm -hmm. He abraded us with our, of, with, our offending of, with our offending the law. Because guess what? I get when you're among them, you teach them the commandments. Listen, by the way, you're not supposed to be buying on the Sabbath. You're supposed to wear fringes on your clothes. So guess what? They don't like that. Go ahead. And objected to our infamy, mm -hmm. the transgressings of our education. What is the education that they was given? The laws of the Most High God, and they rejected it. Go ahead. Because this whole chapter goes into you only live once. You understand? Do you. Me, 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 me. That's what this whole chapter is about. You understand? Read. He professes to have the knowledge of God. You know what that means? And today, in, no, in today's lingo, it says he thinks he's better than us, that one. He thinks he's so righteous. He thinks he's better. He thinks, you know, we're nothing. Yeah, the Bible tells you, says, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor. So which one are you going to believe? You're going to believe what the, what the opinion of the unrighteous says, or you're going to believe what the Lord says. The choice is yours. You understand? Read that again. Verse 13. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 13. Read. He professed to have the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. And he calleth himself the child of the Lord. We say we are the Israelites. We keep the commandments. And they be asking, all the commandments? Yes, all the commandments. Go ahead. He was made to reprove our thoughts. You see that thing? Because our job is to reprove their, their forward thought process. That's the job of the nation of Israel. That's the job of a repenting Israelite is to reprove the thoughts of those that go against this Bible and to, say, to try to seduce you to go back into the world. You understand? So we, he says, he was made to reprove our thoughts. You, even you just by a, you not saying nothing, you are reproving their thought process because why? Why is she dressed like that? Why is she dressing in a long dress? Why is she covered her head like that? Why is she doing that? Because guess what? When your head is covered, it's an example that you are under the submission. You are under what? You are, you are, under, you are under leadership. You are under a father. You are under your husband. That's why you put your headscarf on. Because you are what? It's a sign, of, it's a sign that you, are, you have a hedge over you. So those women that don't want to cover their heads and all of that is because they don't, they hate being told what to do. 
they hate being corrected and being guided and being taught. They don't like that. Even those that are married. That's why today you see sisters that are married, they're still wearing pants, but they say, no, I'm married. I'm a wife. No, you're not a wife. You just pretend like one, but you are not one. You understand? Watch this. Read verse 15 now. Wisdom of Solomon 2, verse 15. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. He is Go ahead. grievous unto us, even to behold. Mm -hmm. For his life is not like other men's. His really? ways are of another fashion. You see that thing? His ways are of another fashion. Why? Because we keep in the commandments, it is going to give you what? It's going to make you to be, it's going to make you strange. Behold. People are going to look at you and look at you strange. What are those things on your shirt? Why do you have a beard? Okay. Why do you speak like that? Why? Because guess what? Watch this. Give me that wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 verse 1. This is why they will speak the way they will, they will speak. Because of what we're about to read. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him. You see that thing? It says, then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as afflicted him. Meaning afflicted him with their words. You understand? The way they speak to bring you down, to make you question what is written. You understand? It says, we're going to stand in great boldness. Watch the next part of that verse. Go ahead. And made no account of his labors. Meaning what? Not taken seriously. And made no account of his labors. The people are not going to take you seriously. It's, guess what? It's not a new thing. It's written in the scriptures. It says, and made no account of his labors. Okay. Next verse. Watch this. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. When they see the great, when they see the salvation, they are going to be troubled with terrible fear. Because why? Now the Lord is delivering us that everybody is going to be fearful on that day. And they're going to remember verse 1. Go ahead. And shall be amazed mm -hmm. at the strangeness of his salvation. They shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. Because why? The way we are going to be delivered is nothing nobody has seen before. Listen, there's going to be Star Wars on this earth when the Lord returns. Understand that, Star Wars. These movies that you'll be watching, that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to be going down on this earth, Star Wars. The stuff that you see on Star Trek, that's what you're going to see on that day. Understand that? Go ahead. So far beyond all that they look for. He says the way is going to be so strange is going to be so far beyond what they look for. Meaning what? They never possibly could imagine that this day would come. Yeah, we talk about it, but the day it happens, they say everybody's going to see him on that day when he descends into the earth. Everybody's going to see the Lord. Okay? So the reason why I'm bringing this up is because what we're reading in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 is, is, is how the, the is how the righteous will act and how the unrighteous will behave based on how they see the righteous applying what is written. You understand? Let's go back. Wisdom of Solomon 2, verse uh, 16. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, verse 16. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. Meaning as fake. Go ahead. He abstains from our ways as from filthiness. Meaning what? He's no longer associating with, with, every, with the people that used to associate himself with. He says he abstained from our ways as from filthiness. Now the things that used to, he used to do in the world, he no longer, he, we are, now we are in the truth, we don't do that no more. We deem that as filthiness. Go ahead. He pronounces the end of the just to be blessed. Because the just are going to be blessed if they keep the commandments. Go ahead. And make it his boast that God is his father. And they bo we boast that God is our father. He's the God of Israel and none else. Go ahead. Let us see if his words be true. Meaning what? They are and going to try you. Hold on. It says, let us see if his words be true. 
They are going to test you. Okay, go ahead. Let us see if his words be true and let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. You see that thing? Let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. You see that thing? That's why it says, but the way of the wicked seduceth them. They are going to prove you. How? Using seduction, deceit, guile, any type of deceitful manner to what? To bring you into what? Into the vomit. Now watch this. Let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon 6 now. Verse 23. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 23. Go ahead. Neither will I go with consuming envy. Mm -hmm. Such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. Because the, the, what we read in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2, that's the righteous. And now we are seeing how, the, 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 we are seeing the mindset of the forward towards the righteous. Because he says, such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. So what is their thought pattern like? That's what we read in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2. These are the things that they were imagining against the righteous of our people, those that, the righteous of us that keep the commandments. Because we, we're doing our best to keep the laws of the Most High. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 30. Proverbs, chapter 14. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 30. A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the, the rottenness of the bones. Read that again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 30. A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. You see what envy does? Envy will kill you. He says, but envy is the rottenness of the bones. Envy will suck the life out of you. You understand? Watch this. Give me Proverbs 27 verse 4. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 4. The book of Proverbs chapter 27 verses 4. Mm -hmm. Wrath is cruel. And anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand before envy? You see that thing? So he's saying cruelty, uh, anger, guess what? They don't come anywhere close to the spirit of envy. Because envy is the rottenness of the bones. Like we read in Proverbs chapter 14 verse 30. It sucks the, li it sucks the life out of you. Watch this. Give me Matthew 10, 27 verse 18. Because the scribes and Pharisees that hated Christ, they delivered him to the what? They delivered him to, uh, to Pontius Pilate because of what? Envy. And he was able to pick that thing up. Read that. Matthew 27, verse 14. No, verse the 18. Matthew, chapter 27, verse 18. Mm -hmm. For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. You see that Pontius Pilate, he knew that because they delivered him because they envied Christ. They had the spirit of envy. It consumed them so much that they, they released Barabbas instead of Christ, a murderer, and kept, and kept in prison an innocent man who did no wrong, who did no sin. You understand? Watch this. Give me Mark 15, verse 10. The book of Mark, chapter 15, verse 10. Read. For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy. You see that thing? He knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy. Give me Mark 8, 31. That's the reason why they rejected Christ. Because of what they had, the spirit of envy on them. Read that. The book of Mark, chapter 8. Verses 31. Read. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things mm -hmm. and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. You see that thing? So, Christ, you see, this is what we're reading here. This is prophecy that Mark is speaking here saying, 
It says what? And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things. He's going to be tortured. He's going to be hung on the cross. He's going to be put to death. It says, and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes. They delivered him to Pontius Pilate because of envy. So guess what? Coming to today, you need to understand, the spirit of envy is going to cause you to deliver your brother to who? To the enemies out there. Envy will cause you to become a spy. That's what envy will do. You understand? Envy will, will cause you to what? Not to want the camp to grow. You don't want, you happy because, no, we're still a small group. Oh, no, you simple as hell. We are going to grow. And we are going to grow so much so that you're not going to be able to stop this moving train. Understand that. You understand? The Lord is prepping us. Understand that thing. He that had an ear, let him hear. Okay? But envy will cause you to have what? Will cause you to deliver your own brother to who? To the, to the heathens? To the, our people that hate this truth? Will cause you to become a spy? Watch this. Give me Acts chapter 7 verse 9. The book of Acts chapter 7 verse 9. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 7 verse 9. Mm -hmm. And the patriarchs moved with envy. They did what? And the patriarchs moved with envy. That's talking about that. Who, who are they talking about? They talk about our forefathers. The 12, the 12, the 12 tribes. They're not the 12 tribes but the 12 sons of Jacob, the 11, by the way, because it says, but the patriarchs moved with envy. Read on. Sold Joseph into Egypt, uh -huh. but God was with him. You see that thing? You see what the brothers did? This is Joseph's brothers. This is our forefathers. You understand? Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Zebulon, so on and so forth. Yes, they, that's what they did. They were moved with these were these are our forefathers, these are brothers. You understand? They were moved with envy, envy against what? Joseph. And they sold their brother into Egypt. But he said the Lord was with him. Watch this. Give me the book of Genesis 37. Genesis chapter 37, verse 9. The book of Genesis. Chapter 37, verses 9. Mm -hmm. And you know he what? dreamed that no, yet no. another dream. Start at, start at verse 5. You know what? Hmm. The book of, start at verse 4. The book of Genesis, chapter 37, verse 4. Go ahead. The book of Genesis, chapter 37, verse 4. Really? And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. You see that thing? So these brothers, the patriarchs, they saw that our forefather Jacob, he loved Joseph more than all his kids. You understand? So it says, it says what? They hated Joseph and could not speak peaceably unto him. They were not friendly to the brother. You understand? They just hated the brother because of that. Go ahead. And Joseph dreamed the dream. Mm -hmm. And he told it to his brethren. And they hated him yet the more. You see that thing? Now I want to show you something. You see this part right here? What I'm seeing is that this, remember, if you leave it back here in Genesis, you're not, really, not going to get it. Bring it to today. You understand? Hatred, envy of one another. I see that. Because I'm a father, I see that. I see these things. You understand? I see some brothers, they are very manipulative. Okay? Some brothers are very manipulative. You understand? Some brothers, they, are, they have the spirit of envy on them. Okay? Some brothers have the spirit of hatred on them, but they hide it very well. I see it. I see that thing. So, the same way, watch this, as we keep reading, watch what our forefather Jacob sees. Keep going. And he said unto them, Here I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. Read. 
For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright, and behold, your sheep stood round about and made obeisance to my sheep. So now Joseph is telling them, listen, the dream that I have, guess what? You are going to bow to me. And he's not saying it in, any, in an evil way. He does not have an evil intent at this point. Go ahead. Not at this point, period. Read. And his brethren said to him, shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? Come on. And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. You see that thing? They hated Joseph even more because of his dreams and the things that he would say. Go ahead. Remember, Joseph is, is what? He, Joseph was a dreamer. You understand? The Lord, the Lord, the Most High God blessed him with dreams and all that. And he knew how to interpret them all praise to the Most High. Now, if you leave it at the dreams part, you're not going to get it. Bring it to today. Because I see some brothers can grasp, grasp things quicker than others. Some brothers can retain things quicker than others. Guess what? Some brothers, they have envy because of that thing. Just like these brothers were envious, or, or, or about, or they're envious towards Joseph. They hated the brother without a cause. Just hate the brother for no reason. But they will smile with you. But inside, there's hatred brooming. There's envy brooming. You see this thing? That's some evil stuff, yeah. That's some evil stuff. That's why some brothers, you, just be, you are just a spiritual midget. You don't grow. Why? Because these are the things that are in your spirit you don't repent from. Okay? Keep going. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. Mm -hmm. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? Read on. And his brethren envied him. They did what? Father, and his brethren envied him. He says his brethren envied him. They envied Joseph. Go ahead. But his father observed the saying. But his father observed the saying. But not only did he observe the saying, but he observed the fact that they envied this boy. They envied this brother. For no reason. So envy translates into what? Hatred. Okay? Envy translates into hatred. That's the point that you want to, you want to, you want to look at it here. I'll give another example. Watch this. Give me First Samuel. Give me First Samuel chapter 18, verse 5. Now, this is when King David... King David was anointed to be king. Okay. Watch this. Look at, look at, here's, a, here's another one that hate, that, that, that had the spirit of envy. Watch this. First Samuel chapter 18. Let's start at verse 5. First book of Samuel chapter 18, verse 5. And David went out with whosoever Saul sent him mm -hmm. and behaved himself wisely. And so sent it, and so set him over men, over the men of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. So now Saul sent David wherever he needed him to go. You understand? For instance, to go to war. He set him over, he set him over as captain of the host. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. And it came to pass as they came. When David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the woman came out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with joy, and with instruments of music. So now David is coming back from slaughtering the Philistines. As, they are, as he's coming back, guess what? The women are singing now that David, King David is back. Well, he wasn't a king at this point. Okay, come on. And the woman answered one another as they played and said, So has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. You see that thing? Saul, they, this, now the women are singing. It says, Saul has slain his, his thousands, and David has, has, and David his ten thousands. So they are singing about this thing, right? You can just imagine a melody. Now, keep going. 
and Saul was very wroth. You see that thing? And Saul was very wroth. Hold on. He says, and Saul was very wroth. He was upset. He was angry about this thing. Why? Because he had the spirit of envy on him. Okay, go ahead. And the saying displeased them, and he said, They have ascribed unto David 10,000, and to me they have ascribed but 1,000. And what can he have more but the kingdom? You see that he says, what more does he want now? He's going to get the kingdom too? That's the, <laughs> listen, the, Saul, like Saul was a simp. King Saul, you know, he was our forefather, you know, Benjamin. <laughs> he was our forefather. But he, he just, the spirit of, the simp spirit jumped on King Saul. That's what happened. Yeah. Go ahead. And so I, David, from that day and forward. You see that thing? He, he had, he what? He had an evil eye towards David from that day. Now, give me the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 27 and verse 5. The book of Proverbs 27 verse 5. Read. Open rebuke is better than secret love. You see that thing? Open rebuke is better than secret love. Go ahead. Watch this. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, mm -hmm. but the kisses. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. You see that thing? But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. What I want to show you, brothers and sisters, too, is that a lot of the times, brother does have an evil eye towards this brother. He's got secret hatred. But when he talks to the brother, it's like everything is all good. That's some evil stuff. That's some evil, nasty stuff. Okay? We're not going to have that. We're not going to have that in this camp. That's not happening. These classes are designed to do what? For brothers and sisters to examine themselves. Because I'll be watching the footage. Because, you know, I do video up uploads every now and again. I'll be seeing some footages. And when I'm watching the footage, I'll be hearing things in the background, in the footage, on the camera work. And I'll be hearing things. I'm like, that's not necessary, actually. Why did he say that? Why did this brother, why is he saying this, these things? Envy. Hatred. You see that the evil eye. I'll be seeing things. Because I, I watch the, I review the tapes. You understand? I see that spirit. Give me, give me the book of Proverbs, okay? Give me Proverbs 23, Proverbs chapter 23. Let me see, let me see. Proverbs 23 and verse, Proverbs 23 and verse 6, I believe. Yes, Proverbs 23 verse 6, read that. The book of Proverbs 23 verse 6. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Mm -hmm. Neither do thou, neither desire thou his dainty meats. You see that thing? This is the law right here. It says, eat thou, is, is eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye. Neither desire thou his dainty meats. Evil eye. Because somebody like this can poison you and put you to death. Okay? While they feast with you. They can just bring alpirimi and they put it in your drink. Then before you know it, you're gone. Because of what? An evil eye. Hatred. Being angry with your brother without a cause. Okay? Watch this. Give me Matthew 5. Matthew 5 is 21. Because Christ addressed this thing, by the way. Matthew chapter 5, uh, verse 21. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 21. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill. Mm -hmm. And whoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. You see that thing? Whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Because that killing, 1 John chapter 3 now, verse 15. 1 John 3. Okay. 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. Let's read that. 
First book of John, chapter 3, verse 15. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. Mm -hmm. And he know that no murderer had eternal life abiding in him. You see what the Lord is saying? You hate your brother, you are a murderer. So that's the same thing we're reading in Matthew 5. Go back to Matthew 5 now, verse 22. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 22. Read. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Mm -hmm. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. So now this goes into what? This goes into you being angry with your brother without a cause. You don't have a cause, a particular cause why you're angry with your brother, why you hate your brother, why you have envy towards your brother. You don't have a cause. Nothing reasonable because if we have to ask, what is the reason why you hate the brother? You really can't, you can't produce tangible proof why you hate the brother. Did you talk to your brother? No. Guess what? Brothers, brothers just be ignoring the scripts. So how can we go into the streets like this when we have such issues we are dealing with? You understand? Watch this. Hmm. Let me see. Go back to go back to First Samuel. Go back to First Samuel chapter 18. I want to go back there. First Samuel chapter 18. First Samuel chapter 18. Uh, verse 10, 18 verse 10. Read that. First book of Samuel, chapter 18, verse 10. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit of God came upon Saul. You see what happened to and Saul? Hold on. It says, and it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul. So who allowed the devil to jump on Saul? The Lord did that thing. Because guess what? He was, he was, he just hated the brother for no reason. So now it says an evil spirit from the Lord came upon him. Go ahead. And he prophesied in the midst of, of the house. And David played with his hand as at other times. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand. So Saul, as David was playing the harp, guess what was going on? Um, no, he didn't say the harp. It's David was playing. It says what? It says there was a javelin in Saul's hand. So Saul had a javelin in his hand. Go ahead. And Saul cast the javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. Mm. And David avoided out of his presence twice. You see that thing? He tried to kill David twice with his javelin. The brother is playing. We know why David was playing. David was playing the harp. Why? Did he say, I think there's some way that he says, let me see something. Because, um, yeah, it says the hub. Give me 1 Samuel 16, verse 23. I know I wasn't seeing things. The hell is this? 1 Samuel 16, verse 23. Um, read verse 23. 1 Samuel 16, verse 23. So when David was playing the harp, when Saul, the spirit of a, the, the evil spirit jumped upon Saul, David played a musical instrument, the harp, and the evil spirit departed from Saul. Because music is a healing, is a healing instrument. The right music, of course. Okay. First Samuel 16, verse 23. Read that. First book of Samuel, chapter 16, verse 23. And it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul. So that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. You see that thing? The evil spirit departed from him. Now, watch this. Go back to 1 Samuel chapter 18 now. So now David, as he was playing, as at other times, like it says in 1 Samuel 18, verse 10, Saul was mad. He was still mad. He could not get over this thing. He didn't want to lay it aside, like it says in First Peter's. Okay, go back to First Samuel eighteen, read verse verse twelve now. 
Well, Book of Samuel chapter 18, verse 12. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. You see that thing? So Saul was mad because guess what? Remember, Saul was given the command to go in, to kill Amalek and to, to leave nothing alive. He decided, I'm going to spare, I'm going to kill some, I'm going to leave the best, I'm going to take the best ones. I'm going to use them for sacrifices. That was not the instruction. He decided, I'm going to do my own thing. So when the spirit departed from Saul, Saul was mad even more. You understand? But the, the, the key is, jump down to verse 28, 1 Samuel 18, verse 28. First book of Samuel, chapter 18, verse 28. Mm -hmm. And Paul saw and knew that the Lord was with David and that Micah, Saul's daughter, loved him. That Michal, Michal meaning Michel, Michelle, Saul's daughter, loved, he loved, she loved King David. Go ahead, verse 29. Then Michal, Saul's daughter, loved him. And Saul was yet the more afraid of David, and Saul became David's enemy continually. You see that thing? He became David's enemy continually. He just hated the brother. That's why Christ said, love thine enemy. He was, this is an example of it. You understand? Because Saul just hated David for no reason. So it is today. You see, those same spirits are back. Now, go back to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. 1 Book of Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Read. Wherefore, laying aside all menace and all guile and hypo hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. You see that thing? And all evil speakings. Go ahead. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. So now, what you want to notice here says, you, we, we dealt with all of these, except, give me that in Leviticus 19, 16 real quick. It says, and all evil speakings, because there's a law against that. Leviticus 19, verse 16. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tailbearer among thy people. Read. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Do you see that thing? Don't go up and down as a tailbearer among thy people, causing, sowing discord and causing divisions. That's against the most High God's laws. Let's go back. First Peter 2, verse 1 again. First book of Peter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. And all evil speakings as being a tailbear. Hold on. Come on. Stay with me. And it says, and all he is what? And hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. So now, we're going to deal with this in another class. This last part right here, evil speakings, we will deal with that. Next verse. Go ahead. As newborn babes. Mm, as what? Desire. As newborn babes. As you are born again, as a newborn baby in this truth. All, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You are a new creature. As a new creature, as a newborn baby. Go ahead. Desire the sincere milk of the word. That he mm -hmm. may grow the baby. So that's the only time when growth will come. Growth will not come if verse 1 is not applied. You understand? So these are, well, the reason why we went over this is so that you don't become, you don't stay a spiritual midget or become one. Or end up being a spiritual midget. You have to grow in this truth. That's why I tell you brothers, do your chapters, study. You understand? Because it's going to build your spirit up. It's going to help you. You studying, you going over the classes that we go over on a daily basis, you understand, the Sabbath classes and so forth, the councils is going to grow your spirit, is going to build you up. Understand that thing. I'm going to end the class right there. All praise to the Most High, in the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, for laying his life down for the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Okay?
For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that. All praises to the Lord.